Hey guys, Mr. Metal Man here with a video on 5 things you need to stop or start doing on Halo Infinite's Forge. For this video, I'm just looking at common mistakes or things people are forgetting to do when making a Halo Forge map. And a lot of these problems aren't new in the Halo Forge community, but with Forge being out for a few months now for Halo Infinite, I figured I'd touch on some of the things I commonly see when looking through maps. And I'll start the list with more important issues that actually affect gameplay, and I'll slowly move down to more trivial issues that are more like aesthetic or publishing issues. So without further ado, this is 5 things you need to stop or start doing in Halo Infinite Forge. So I'll start with one of the most common mistakes I see in Forge maps. Spawning. How many times has this happened to you? You're playing on a cool looking map, and then you die and respawn, and suddenly you respawn outside of the map in the sky like you just saw. Well, it could be from a couple of issues with the map. Well, one reason this happens is simply just there isn't enough respawn points or initial spawns on the map. Of course, some maps are meant for small player counts. I personally like to fill my map up with enough initial spawns to support big team battle, just in case somebody wants to download the map and mess around with it. And another issue with respawn points is sometimes people won't respawn if there's danger around or someone could see the spawn point. Obviously, you don't want people to be spawn killed, but you also don't want them spawning outside the map. So I personally always have a few respawn points that ignore line of sight just to prevent this issue. So another common issue I see in maps is cameras. Have you ever loaded into your map or someone else's and you've seen this? When the initial camera starts shaking uncontrollably like this, it's because there's only one initial camera placed on the map. Under the object properties of the camera, make sure the sequence order is 1, and the camera blend is start. Then spawn in a second camera and change the sequence order to two and the camera blend to end. This should give you a nice smooth intro camera for the map and not that shaky nonsense like before. And if you want multiple angles of the map shown, just copy the steps I just showed, but instead change the sequence orders to three to four and five to six and so on. There are a few other camera related things that can improve your map, and they're actually related to spawning, so you're actually getting a two for one here. Under the gameplay tab, select match flow. From here you can actually select the team intro cameras, as well as the winning team camera, and that'll pop up at the end of the match with the winning team of course doing their poses. I think having these intro and outro cameras just helps your map flow a little better and look a little nicer. Next we're going to get into another issue I see a lot of, map descriptions. They may not seem like such a big deal on the surface, but as somebody who hosts a lot of custom games, I look at the descriptions to determine how many players can play on the map, what kind of game types go with the map, or any other important details that I need to know. Here's a few examples I have of map descriptions that are lacking details that I found in the content browser. This map mentions an unlimited grapple shot, but not much else. This one has a nice little tagline, but nothing regarding the number of players or game types or anything. This one just has made by the creator, and that's it. As somebody who hosts custom games and looks for new maps all the time, I really wouldn't bookmark any of these maps I've shown, because I'm not sure of the amount of players the map can handle, I'm not sure what game types the map can handle, it's just lacking a lot of important information. And then I switch to a map like this. Now the description may be small, but it has all the information I really need to want to try this map out. It has a nice short tagline, it has the amount of players that the map can handle, and it has the game types the map can handle. It's leaving out any mystery that the map might have, because there's too many times where I've downloaded a map that looked cool, and then I get in there, and I have a full lobby, and half the people spawn outside the map because the map wasn't intended for that many people. Or I try to play a King of the Hill or a Capture the Flag match on there and it doesn't work because the map was never intended for that, but they never said anything in the description about it. And of course there's no rules on making descriptions, but I like to touch on three key points when I make mine, just to make the ease of access a little nicer for people who are downloading the map. Such as a nice short tagline, uh, like a brief description of the map like you'd see on any other Halo map. The optimal number of players the map can handle as well as any game types that are set up for the map, or any that aren't if you set up most of them. Now this next one's kind of a no-brainer, and there's no rules against it, of course, but it's something I just see happening so often when you're looking through the content browser, and that is maps published before they are finished. And I don't mean a map that has been blocked out already and is just waiting on certain game types or extra spawns or extra textures to be added. That's not that important, honestly especially if you label that a work in progress in the description. 
No, I'm more talking about the maps that you spawn in and there's maybe one spawn point, there's no weapons, there's nothing really even built, honestly. I've downloaded some maps that don't say in the description that they're a work in progress and then you load in and it's like maybe a quarter of a map has been built. Personally, I'm just not sure why you would publish a map before it's ready to be playtested at the very least. And I'm about to show you a perfect example of this that's kind of funny I found on the second page of the content browser. Here we have a map called Super Scary, and the description just says, ooh, spooky. And this is what I see when I drive in. Just a giant chair, a giant guy, and a couple rocks, and a warthog. Now we all mess around in Forge and do stupid stuff like this, of course. I just don't understand why you published this. Like I said, there's no rules against it, it just seems like a weird thing to do and you're just kinda clogging up the space for actual good maps that could be downloaded. Now I know that was kind of a silly example, but there's plenty of maps that I've downloaded and played on that were just half of a map being built that might have actually looked good in the long run, but they only had one base done and a couple of spawns on the map. Personally, I'm not sure why you would publish it at that point, because someone like me might bookmark it, see only half a map finished, and I'm going to unbookmark it and I'll probably never see it again. And I personally wouldn't do this, but some people will abuse the rating system and they just might rate your map a 1 and then they'll unbookmark it and never give you a chance again and then your map will permanently be a 1, even though someday it might actually be a masterpiece. So I would just say hold off on publishing it until you get at least you know enough spawns and the block layouts done so you can actually play the map and it doesn't look like whatever we just saw. Now this next one might sound a little harsh, and it's honestly more of a personal opinion, so don't let my dumbass influence you if this is what you want to do. But I am seeing so many remakes of old Halo maps, it's astonishing. I searched Guardian, a map from Halo 3, and over 25 results came up. Now a lot of these, people put their own spin on it, which is great, I'm all for that. But my point is, if you're going to make a remake of an old map, you have to bring your A game because there are extremely talented forgers out there making these maps already. Like I said, I know I kind of sound like an ass right now. Because people can remake whatever they want and if they enjoy it, they enjoy it. That's, that's more power to them. I would never knock anyone else's artistic journey. But I've seen quite a few people post online to different forums their uh, remakes and creations. And you have to be prepared for any criticisms that come your way. We have a huge multitude of multiple maps from Halo and Call of Duty and other games being remade right now. So of course it's your choice if you want to try attempting remaking one of these maps as well. But as a tip, I would maybe go search for the map you're looking to remake first and see if it's already been remade. And just take a look at what that person did to get the details right in their map. So you can go your own path and make one as well. And just maybe look at some of the remakes from like Flacco or Unique. Because their remakes are phenomenal. And you might learn some tips or tricks, or just might want to move on to a new project because you might not want to waste too much energy on something that's already pretty much been perfected and that everyone else is already playing. Like I was saying, this last tip was more of an opinion, honestly. I just think we have a lot of remakes as it is, and some people are just experts at it at this point. But don't let that stop you from making your own creation or putting your own spin on an old classic. I just simply wanted to point out how many remakes I'm seeing and how many are actually getting played, and there's usually only a couple at the top of the list. I just wouldn't want people putting a lot of time into something only to realize there's an amazing remake of it already that everyone's playing and they're probably never going to download yours. It sounds a bit harsh, but we all know it's true. An old metal man's just trying to look out for you. And that was it for my tips on 5 things you need to stop or start doing in Halo Infinite's Forge. And if you liked that video, consider subscribing, it would really help me out. I make all sorts of Halo and Forge content. And if you want to see a funny video on how to sprint backwards in Halo Infinite, I'm going to put that up on the screen right now. And as always, thank you for watching.